Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for November 8th. My goodness, is it November 8th already? Well, November 8th is the 312th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, with 53 days remaining until the end of the year. Anyway, we're going to start today with the year 1519, when Hernan Cortez entered Tenochtitlan, not to be confused with Teotihuacan, <laughs> And Aztec ruler Moctezuma welcomed him with great celebration. Anyway, we'll move on to Bram Stoker, Irish novelist and critic, rated Count Dracula. He was born on this date in 1847, died in 1912. 1864, Abraham Lincoln was reelected. Northern voters overwhelmingly endorsed the leadership and policies of Abraham Lincoln when they elected him to the second term. And, but with his reelection, any hope for a negotiated settlement with the Confederacy vanished. In 1887, Doc Holliday died of tuberculosis. <laughs> he was a, a gunslinger, a gambler, and occasional dentist. <laughs> died of tuberculosis perhaps most famous for his participation in the shootout at the Old K Corral. He was actually born in Georgia and raised in the tradition of the Southern gentleman. Earned his nickname when he graduated from the Pennsylvania College of Dental Surgery in 1872. And he actually did embark on a respectable career as a dentist in Atlanta, but he developed a bad cough and doctors diagnosed him with tuberculosis and recommended that he move to a more arid climate. So he moved his practice to Dallas, Texas. By all accounts, he was a competent dentist with a successful practice, but it turns out he liked cards more than he liked teeth. Earned a reputation as a skilled poker player, but not quite skilled enough to avoid arrest. <laughs> well, actually, he was arrested for participating in a shootout in Dallas. As the text says, thereafter, the once upstanding doctor began drifting between the booming Wild West towns of Denver, Cheyenne, Deadwood, and Dodge City, making his living at card tables and aggravating his tuberculosis with heavy drinking and late nights. He lived hard and died relatively young at the tender age of 36. Now, if you're in your 20s or younger, maybe you don't think 36 is all that young, but I've got children older than that, so it seems pretty young to me. <laughs> In 1889, Montana was admitted as the 41st U.S. state. Oh, this is exciting. Do you remember yesterday we talked about Marie Curie and uh, how she studied uranium and, and named polonium and radium? Well, you know, because all the rage at that time, this German scientist had discovered x-rays and everybody was all wound up about x-rays. And so she studied the other stuff. Anyway, on this day in history, the German scientist discovers x-rays while experimenting with electricity. Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen became the first person to observe x-rays, a significant scientific advancement that would ultimately benefit a variety of fields, most of all medicine, by making the invisible visible. The novelty of it was quite something, and before they realized that, oh, wait a minute, maybe you shouldn't have that many x-rays, uh, during the 30s, 40s, and 50s, many American shoe stores featured shoe-fitting fluoroscopes that used x-rays to enable customers to see the bones in their feet. It wasn't until the 50s that they finally realized that this might not be the best idea. Wilhelm Röntgen received numerous accolades for his work, including the first Nobel Prize in Physics in 1901, yet he remained modest and never tried to patent his discovery. Today, X-ray technology is used widely in medicine, material analysis, and devices such as airport security scanners. On November 8th of 1900, Margaret Mitchell, author of Gone with the Wind, was born in Atlanta, Georgia. In 1923, the Beer Hall Putsch begins. I wondered, why did they name it that? And I haven't figured that out yet. But anyway, it is that Adolf Hitler was trying to seize control of the German government. And so that was one of the things that he tried. Actually, it didn't work out for him. A failed takeover of the government in Bavaria. In 1927, American singer and actress Patti Page was born. 
1939, in Munich, Adolf Hitler narrowly escaped an assassination attempt. Interestingly enough, while celebrating the 16th anniversary of the Beer Hall Push. <laughs> Imagine celebrating a failure, go figure. In 1951, Yogi Berra was named the American League MVP, Most Valuable Player. On November 8, 1951, Yankees catcher Yogi Berra was named the American League Most Valuable Player for the first time in his career. He said, it's great to be classed with fellows like DiMaggio and Rizzuto who have won the award. I sure hope I can win it a couple more times. And by golly, he did. Went on to be league MVP twice more in 1954 and 1955. In 1960, John Kennedy was elected president. In 1962, the headline says, the sun sets on the Ford Rotunda. And it is that the Ford Rotunda was a building that had been designed for the 1933 Century of Progress Exposition in Chicago. And once that exposition was done, then Ford had it moved to Dearborn. It was 130 feet high and designed to look like a stack of gears surrounding a 92 foot wide courtyard. In 1952, an 18,000 pound dome was added over the courtyard. It was the first real-world application of inventor Buckminster Fuller's lightweight geodesic dome. Pretty interesting. It was apparently quite something to see. And around the holidays, they decorated up in lights, and so it was uh, quite a community project. And it was the fifth most popular tourist attraction in the United States behind Niagara Falls, Smoky Mountain National Park, Smithsonian, and Lincoln Memorial. So, you know, back then, if you were planning a big family trip, that might be one of the places you would choose to go. Well, on this day then, the workmen were getting the rotunda ready for the annual Christmas display, and someone accidentally knocked over a fire pot or a heater on the building's tar roof. This was in the days before everybody had a little movie camera in their pocket, so I don't know that there's any video of the event. But workers evacuated and the building burned to the ground in less than an hour. How heartbreaking. They determined that it would have cost at least $15 million to rebuild it. I don't know what that translates to current day dollars, but the company decided not to spend the money and just went ahead and leveled it flat after all. On November 8th of 1965, a fellow named Lawrence Joel was awarded the Medal of Honor. In 1972, HBO launched its programming with the broadcast of the 1971 movie Sometimes a Great Nation, starring Paul Newman and Henry Fonda, both of whom are it now have now joined the great movie studio in the sky. 1973, Maurice Ferre becomes the first Puerto Rican to lead a major U.S. mainland city. He was elected mayor of Miami, Florida. In addition to becoming the first Puerto Rican to lead a major city in the mainland United States, he was also the first Hispanic mayor of Miami. Ooh, in 1974, Ted Bundy botched an, an abduction attempt. Salt Lake City, a woman named Carol Durant was out shopping and uh, she came out of the store and he pretended to be a detective and said something was wrong with her car and that he needed her to come make a report and convinced her to come get in his car with him. And as soon as she had, he, here came the handcuffs and he tried to attach her to the car and by golly, she fought back and made an escape. I guess that was probably the beginning of the end for him because now they had a description of him and his car. There were a bunch of women that had gone missing or turned up dead, and he had something to do with the good lot of them, if you don't happen to know about Ted Bundy. If you're a, a true crime fan, then yep, you know about him, sure enough. So, yep, he, uh, he was not successful in that abduction attempt, and he still had some crimes to commit, but at least they had a feature on who he was. In 1994, Sonny Bono was elected to the U.S. Congress. Now, I always wondered, you know, I didn't think that his mother named him Sonny on his birth certificate. No, his name is Salvatore. Apparently was a pleasant, friendly fellow who could get people to be more agreeable. We sure need more of that. I don't have the date for it, but he died in a skiing accident. That was sure a sad thing. Anyway, Sonny Bono. 1994, for the first time in 40 years, the Republican Party won control of both the U.S. House of Representatives 
and the Senate in midterm congressional elections. 2012, Leland Stanford McPhail Jr., better known as Lee McPhail, was an American front office executive for Major League Baseball. He worked as a baseball executive for the New York Yankees, the Baltimore Orioles, and as a chief aide to Commissioner of Baseball, William Eckert, and president of the American League. Born in Nashville, Tennessee in 1917, he was the son of Leland S. McPhail Sr., better known as Larry McPhail, who was also a front office executive with several teams over his career. Larry and Lee McPhail are the only father and son pair to be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Lee McPhail died on this date, November 8, 2012, at the age of 95. And I think that's going to do it for us today. As always, links to my research are included in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and feel free to share this video. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. All right, let's try this again. Blah, 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 coffee mug. <laughs>